Hello, Quincy. My name's Eileen Fontenot. I'm one of the librarians at the Thomas Crane Library. I'm here today with professional genealogist Michael Brophy, uh, and he'll be doing a program at the main branch on Wednesday, November 13th at 7 o'clock about genealogy and local history, myths, and legends. Welcome. Thank you, Eileen, right. for having me. Okay. Great to be back. Great. Um, so why don't you, well, before we start talking about your program, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and what your background is? Um, I'm a professional genealogist. Um, I've been doing this for about, oh, this is my 15th year. started uh -huh. in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, I do professional genealogy work. I work um, two sides of the business. I, I do work in the legal community where I find missing and lost heirs to estates. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's sort of the forensic genealogy side, as well as I do work for the general public where I trace estates. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I do work for the general public where I do um, genealogical work mm -hmm. um, tracing family histories uh, oh. with a specialty in Irish genealogy in particular, mm -hmm. but uh, I do other work in mm -hmm. French ancestry, for example, oh. or Mayflower oh. descendancy, yeah. that sort of thing as well. Oh, that's interesting. How did you become a professional genealogist? Well, it started out um, unusually enough as, uh, as, as an amateur, I think, as most of us mm -hmm. start out as, um, with doing sort of a father-son project shortly after my dad retired um, mm -hmm. in the mid-1990s. Um, a cousin of mine did a great genealogy on my mother's side after his, after his mother died. And it kind of got a conversation going between my dad and I as to what we knew about um, my father's side and he said well not much mm. so it kind of got uh, a project going uh, with my dad in his retirement years mm -hmm. and me when my work sort of slowed down and, mm -hmm. and we caught the bug we caught oh, the genealogy yeah. <laughs> bug which yeah. a lot of people do and um, it, it, you know it, we I went to a whole bunch of conferences got some credentials mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm an MBA, I, I got a master's in business administration, I know how to do some decent research, right, right. and I've got a bachelor's degree, and uh, I've been doing it since about 2004 professionally, right, lecturing right. and doing research for clients and, mm -hmm. and the like as well. Yep. Yes, yeah, so you visited us at the main library a few times, so I think this is your third, t third or fourth time with us. So um, and this times, yeah, something fourth? like that, yeah. <laughs> so this time is about myths and legends. Can you describe a, a few of them and uh, what you'll be talking about during the uh, program? Yeah, it's one of my favorite talks to give. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it has to do with family legends and family stories that come, come down. There's all kinds of great stories that every family, I think, mm -hmm. has its unique legends and stories that come down, whether we're descended from a Native American as a very popular one mm -hmm. around here um, that uh, has to do most famously or infamously depending on where you swing politically yeah, with, a, with a woman from our, our, our US senator who's running for president mm -hmm. right now um, I was contacted by the press on that one on, oh, really? on one wow. occasion Interesting. before that became public yeah um, there is one about uh, our name was changed at Ellis Island mm -hmm. um, that's that's a very very popular one um, one in four Americans can trace their ancestry through mm -hmm. um, Ellis Island. Mm -hmm. There's um, one about uh, three brothers who came over to America mm -hmm. uh, together, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is rarely <laughs> true. Um, there's also another legend that I heard in my family that the courthouse burned down. Really? And all the records were lost right. in the courthouse fire. Yeah, not every courthouse can burn down, right? No, <laughs> um, and not all the right. courthouses burned down during the Civil War when Ger General oh, right. Sherman marched through Georgia too. Mm -hmm. uh, there were many. There were a lot of courthouses that burned down, right. and records were destroyed. But I'm going to sort of address that in mm -hmm. detail during the course of the talk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they didn't all happen during the Civil War, right. uh, and they happened for other reasons. Oh. Um, so that's kind of an interesting one to look at, too. And there's also this one about, um, you know, with Thanksgiving coming up, mm -hmm. um, about some legends I'll, I'll talk about in, in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being on the south shore of Boston, uh, I think there's over a million uh, Mayflower descendants um, uh, worldwide oh, is okay. the last number that I heard, and um, there are plenty of myths and legends around Mayflower descendants. Right. There's an old saying that the Mayflower was the most crowded 
<laughs> ship that ever <laughs> sailed the, the ocean seas. All right. Everybody wants to be a Mayflower descendant, uh, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah with Not and, a, uh, and, there's, and there's going to be great events, fabulous events coming up right. in Plymouth next year with the, the anniversary, the 400th anniversary right. coming up in Plymouth 2020. Yeah. That place is going to be rocking yeah. next year. Yeah. That was a very timely talk then. Yeah. I mean, uh, so most people hear about these myths and legends from their family, their grandma or grandpa type yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Really at the heart of the heart of the talk is really about oral history mm. and how oral history gets passed down mm -hmm. in our family from generation to generation and how that can get distorted, mm -hmm. um, how that can be helpful, um, and how to sort of sort through the myths and the legends mm -hmm. that get passed down. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, every family has its, its stories mm -hmm. that get passed down from right. generation to generation. And I love hearing the stories, um, mm -hmm. you know, from audience members afterwards. And I right. love to take questions and hear stories mm -hmm. um, afterwards. And I have some stories to share of my own okay. that some people might be able to relate right. to. I hope they can relate to it. Yeah. And so you'll be showing people maybe how they can distinguish the fact from fiction. Yeah. So are these kind of stories more harmless fun, or is it important to challenge these stories when you hear mm -hmm. about them? I think it's important to challenge them mm -hmm. um, respectfully, right. particularly when you're speaking to an older relative. Mm -hmm. um, but use them as sort of guide, not gospel. Mm -hmm. um, and to sort of back them up with, with good research. Mm -hmm. um, and I can kind of give you a guide as to many, many uh, tools that are in the, the toolkit mm, as okay. to how um, these stories can be verified because, you know, not all of our memories, particularly for those of us who are over the age of 50, mm -hmm. um, our memories tend to fade. The details kind of mm -hmm. get lost as, right. as uh, we, we are in the over 50 crowd like me. <laughs> uh, our memories tend to fade and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, I can sort of give folks a mm -hmm. bit of a, uh, of a guidepost, a bit mm -hmm. of a roadmap, I should right. say, um, towards, you know, how to sift through um, you know, the myth versus the, mm -hmm. um, the reality right. um, in, in their family legends. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's important to kind of document, uh, you know, in writing, so to speak, or in the computer, these sort of things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've, you hit it right on mm -hmm. the head. Yeah. So, um, let's see what else. Um, I want to go back to those three brothers thing that you mentioned before. Yeah. When you said that, I, I was like, why is that strange that three brothers would go would go together? Well, I, that, uh, that's an interesting yeah. one, Eileen, that you bring up. Yeah. Because making one of the most difficult things to do when doing genealogical historic mm -hmm. research is to document your ancestors mm -hmm. from over the, over the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. or, or the Pacific, wherever mm -hmm. they came from. And I think it's a way of maybe harshly assessing the research or easily explaining away the research to say that one brother went east, one brother went west, one brother went north, mm -hmm. and explaining that they came over all together rather than do our due diligence mm -hmm. and good rigorous research in the record repositories mm -hmm. as well as online mm -hmm. and saying that they were all brothers who came over together at the mm -hmm. same time rather than noting that they may have been cousins, they may have been aunt, uh, they may have been uncles right. or or cousins or something like that, an uncle, you know, right. in age and all, and oh, sort okay. of explain it away. Yeah. How these legends come about, um, you'll have to come to the talk to find <laughs> right. out. Right. I'm sure it sounds fascinating. There's and my uh, teaser for you. Yeah, ex perfect. <laughs> um, I'm sure that since you've been doing this from 2004, it's changed a lot. Oh um, yeah. I mean, it, it, the internet was kind of still kind of young back then. Yes. H how have you found that to be different today rather than then? Yeah, back in 2004, records were just starting to, mm -hmm. and even when I started as an amateur, there was barely anything online. Mm -hmm. um, as well as DNA was just in its infancy as oh well. Right, that's a good point. Yeah. And I think that d those are both useful tools in the mm -hmm. toolbox of, of genealogical research. But it's important to know that most genealogically relevant documents and material is still not online, uh, and for very mm -hmm. good reasons, for privacy, mm -hmm. for copyright reasons oh, okay. uh, as well. So um, I think it's important to note that um, most of the records are going to be in record repositories mm -hmm. to this day and will continue to be. Mm -hmm. Most experts that I talk to and people in the field estimate that it's about 15 to 20 percent of relevant records are online. Wow, that's a small amount. Yeah. That's, 
And so you'll be sharing with people where they can find these physical records and things like that, and yeah. so they can do their research. Yep, well, including if you know if you're in a place like Quincy, mm -hmm. I mean, right here in the library. Yep, exactly. Well, that's perfect. That sounds really interesting, and um, very glad you could stop by. Uh, hope everyone is able to come and uh, th uh, meet Michael on Wednesday, November 13th at 7 p.m., and he'll be talking about genealogy, myths, and legends.